Hey, medicine man here. I answered a question a while back about base weights and everybody now is trying to get to their lightest base weight and they think that the base weight they have to start with at Campo is the one they have to finish with and uh, some people think that but your base weight is yours. It's an individual thing. It's not mine. It's not Dixie's. It's not jail baits. It's not tripods. It's your base weight. It's what you're going to bring. Um, nobody else matters. Look at all the information and make your own choices. But for me, there's three basic base weights. The Sierras, the Summer, which is in this bag, and my Fall, and, well, Spring and Fall. Basically, it's my Summer plus this is my Spring and Fall. My Summer, Spring and Fall, and Sierras for that. My base weight ranges from, I think it's 11 and a half, I'll find out, 11 and a half to 20 pounds on my base weights. The 20 pounds is off, obviously, or 22 pounds. Obviously, my Sierra stuff, because I got a big heavy, bait, heavy bear can. I got a pound's worth of micro spikes, stuff like that, some extra things. I got some gators for snow. But it's your base weight. I'm kind of filming on my little TV chairs. Basically, to show you just how little some of this stuff is, how little you can get by with. Basically, this is my summer gear. Tent, I got my backpack. <clears throat> I got a Shamog, giant scarf, if you don't know what that is, made out of 100% cotton. Last for me, I know, but it's cotton. Works great. I got my Tyvek ground sheet for my air mattress. Uh, it's an Uber Light. Electronics bag. My medicine kit, usually it's more than this. I uh, don't have it all in there yet because uh, I have a bad heart and I have a lot of medication I got to take. This is my shelter. It's a tarp, Tancho tarp. Um, and I use it for rain and basically a, a tarp. I got my puffy. Everybody gets, everybody goes crazy on puffies. I don't know why. This one works great for me. Is it the lightest? No, it's uh, 17, no, 16 ounces. I know, but it works for me. I'm not going to spend $200 to get one that weighs seven. It works for me. I cold soak whenever I'm really running high and I got to go uh, make a lot of miles. So I cold soak everything. And as a side note, everything that's dehydrated can be cold soaked. It just depends on how much time you're going to keep it in your jar. I bring two jars, total 24 ounces worth of volume, cold soak a rice side, a vegetable or something like this, or a vegetable and a meat and a, and a rice or something. I can keep them separate so they don't blend and uh, they're real easy to clean. Clothes sack, always carry something to sleep in, a pair of pajamas if you will, or a pack liner, sleeping bag liner I should say. Um, you don't have any idea how bad your stuff will start smelling if you don't do this stuff. And you won't smell it. Everybody else will. So pajamas, a town shirt, a pair of uh, foot warmers for at night, down foot booties. And that's it for my change of clothes. Um, and I always bring a town shirt you never touch until you go into town because, again, that smell issue is there. Water purification, it never changes. Uh... I live in the Arizona desert, northern Arizona desert. I go from 90 to 100 degrees down to 40 and 50 degrees at night. As an example, tomorrow it's supposed to be 80 degrees again and it's supposed to get below freezing tomorrow night. That's the temperature changes I'm used to backpacking in. You're going to get a little bit of that from Campo, especially leave in March, April, or May. Uh, especially if you go up towards uh, San Jacinto. So, air bag, air bags here. I got my bear can line in here. I always carry it with you because even though you're really, it really doesn't matter anymore. And it's been, been pretty much disproven that it, that it really works. I keep it. Uh, steaks, spoon, a pillow. And I use this for my summer weight sleeping 
bag. It's a down blanket. It's a uh, rather small down blanket, and it works great. It's 15, no, 14 ounces. So that's my summer gear. My fall and my spring gear, a little bit different. This gets changed out for my sleeping bag. And this, I'll change it to this. And I'll change my tarp shelter uh, to, the, to my tent. I splurged and got a Z-Pax tent. There's a ten, uh, eight ounce difference between the two. And I'll use this and this for my spring and, shelf, spring and fall uh, gear. And I'll bring this too. I'll start cooking some more. I have additional electronics that I'll have. I'll bring an extra spare set of socks. And I bring a $5 pair of gloves, little knit gloves from a discount store. Spring and fall in Southern California, this is all you need. Little repair kit if I'm going heavy, you know, long distance. And I'm bringing electrolytes. And that's it for summer, spring, and fall. That's your changes, quite literally. For your Sierra gear, um, your high winter gear, um, it's what everybody gets scared of. There's nothing to be afraid of about Sierra. Um, be concerned. Be aware. Uh, from Campbell up, that first 702 miles, you'll get your head straight on the Sierras. Don't worry about them now. Don't let any of the fear mongers uh, change your mind or make you buy something huge that you're not going to need. Um, as a matter of fact, I recommend don't get your bear can. Don't buy your, your ice axe. Don't buy your micro spikes until you get to Kennedy Meadows or until you get to a point where you're sure that you're going to be going through the Sierras. It's an expense you don't have to do if, if worse comes to worse and you get off trail early. Um, and if you get to Cam South, they have them there. They're reasonably priced. You can all, they'll also take shipments in. You can have people ship stuff in. Um, and you can order from Amazon and have it delivered if you want. Um, it comes in. Anyway, to get into this. My changes, yeah, like I said, I got the cheapest ice axe I could find. Lightus, the Camp Corsa. Everybody's got it. I got some homemade edge protectors. Um, I suggest you either buy one or make them. Because those edge protectors not only protect the, the ice axe, it protects you and your friends. Um, but yeah, get this only if you need it. I got this. Used it once. Got there late enough in the season where... I really didn't even, need, didn't even need it then. Anyway, so it's late in the season. You don't need it. Uh, when I'm in the Sierras, what I'll do is I'll have my tarp poncho and I'll have my tent. And I'll use this as a windbreak. And for any sudden rainstorms come up, I use it as the poncho only. I also get my cheapest, I can find, Frog Togs rain jacket. It works fine. Do I get a little sweaty occasionally? Yeah, but... The four times you use it, it's, it's bearable. It's 40 bucks. And I got some, uh, I do have for the Sears, I have some decent gloves with liners that are inside. And I have a balaclava for my head and an extra pair of socks. And I got these in the mail. I thought I'd try these waterproof socks, just see how they work. Um, and I'll bring those next time. And I got to bring a pair of long pants. These are Arcteryx long pants, uh, mainly because they were a gift, again. And uh, I like them. They work pretty good. I bring those for long pants so I can hike in them. They're very comfortable. They're very forgiving on when you have to stretch and reach the wrong ways. And uh, I have sandals. And I have shoes. I'm not advertising ultras. I'm going to get some Ultra Olympus. And maybe some Hoka ones to see what happens. I've got a foot issue right now that I think is lifelong, but that means you're not going to see Medicine Man in his trademark sandals anymore. Sandals anymore. But always carry a pair of sandals through the Sierras because you want to keep your feet dry. You want to hike through the Sierras quickly, and you got a lot of water crossings. I can sandals for a while. Hike right through this, the, all the water crossings using sandals of some kind. Get on the other side. Take the time. Dry your, dry off your feet. Put them in a clean pair of socks. 
and get moving. Keep your feet dry. Uh, avoid some problems. So that's why I add these. I'm going to need one set. A set of shoes or sandals is going to be on my backpack all the time. That's why it's in with my base weight. Either one. Yeah, are the weights a little different? Yeah, but they're still going to be one or the other. And that gives, this adds me up to 22 pounds. If I didn't uh, have that, it would be uh, my backpack would be 20 pounds. Base weight for the Sierras. That's bare can and all. So pull those over there. Micro spikes. A lot of people say you need them at, at uh, on San Jacinto. I won't say you don't. Um, yeah, I won't say you don't. It's your call on that. I used them once in San Jacinto. And uh, yeah, for about 100 yards. Uh, yeah, once for about 100 yards in San Jacinto. Microspikes, mainly for the Sierras. I got cheap, cheap gators. Um, blue because I like the color. I don't need these to last a whole lot of seasons. I got cheap ones. Put them down. If they tear, that's what dental floss and a needle's for. You can just sew it right back up. Keeps the snow out of your boots or shoes, whatever you're going to take. Um, and you got your bear can. Bear can, this is a BV500. Um, my choice, you get your own if you like, whatever brand you want. This is two and a half pounds. The barricade ones are made out of Kevlar. They're like half the weight for the same volumes. Uh, get them what you want, but this is my gear. Um, and like I said, it doesn't matter what Darwin says, it doesn't matter what Dixie says, it doesn't matter what I say, it doesn't matter what tripod or gel braid or band aid or you know, jet fighter or anybody, any of the big hikers you got out there. Sage, good folks, every one of them good folks. I consider everyone a friend. But that's their gear. You get your gear. Don't worry if your sleeping bag is 34, 35 ounces. Mine's 28. Don't worry about that. It's your gear. Carry your gear. If you need to change, if you want to change, Amazon's Three-day shipping policy, four-day shipping policy. Order it and pick it up in the next town. You're never more than a few days away from any kind of town, especially on the first 702 miles. You're there. You can change it up. That's what the 700 miles is. It's a boot camp. It's a learning experience for the rest of the hike. Okay, packaging. How do you pack your stuff? Well... Every person has their way to do it. General guidelines is bulky sleeping bag, sleeping quilt, stuff in the bottom, heavier stuff towards the middle, and easy access required daily stuff in the top. You'll figure out your best pack method as you go. You want it balanced also. Everybody uses a trash compactor bag. I use space bags. They have a Ziploc top. You get these at you know dollar store, Target, Walmart, big grocery stores. Space bag. bag in here, my puffy, anything that's a daily use that I might use that I don't want to have in a bag. And I use that for my pack line. As for packaging for everything else, my medicine kit, everything's a different color, different size, different texture. I don't have to see it to pull it out. Reason I have, this is my my poncho tarp, I use it. The reason I have this and the tent even in a bag is in case they get wet and dirty and I don't have any choice and I don't get to clean them and dry them out right away, I can throw them in here and get going. Pull it out and you clean it off all later. It's just delayed work, but if you have to get going in the rain or something like this, you got a dry bag to stick this stuff in. Something to keep your stuff from getting, the rest of your stuff from getting messed up. So it's the only reason these are in a bag. That leaves these. I got four items. Medicine kit, which is also my heart medicine and all other stuff. Electronics bag, and my first aid slash repair kit. Um, only reason it's first aid is because I have Tiger Bomb in here and I use that occasionally. And the rest of it's just, you know, tape and crap. All these have little tiny items. Little tiny items, put in separate bags, let, let they go to. Electronics, medicine. Repair kit. Steaks. Steaks came in a free bag. It's replaceable for free. 
cut the end off and you got all the stakes you need. They're all stay, stay right there. That's it. Always count your stakes as you put them in. And before you put them in your pack, count them one more time. Can't tell you how many times I've gotten free stakes because people forgot and left them in. So you've seen all, well, most, most all my gear. Any combination of that, I'm hiking with it every time I go out. Um, it's not the lightest. You saw my lightest was 11.2 pounds. Um, and that's when I'm really trying to make a lot of miles and I know I can get resupplied and all this stuff when I get to my end. Um, most of it, most of the time I'm at 16 pounds, 15, 16 pounds. Don't worry if it's not the lightest. Don't worry about your, if your, if your stuff isn't the, the most premium. You see my stuff isn't, but I have a great time when I'm out there. Every time I go out hiking with somebody, I learn something new, regardless of experience level. Beginner, the vastly more experienced than The neat thing is, in this community, we all help each other out. I hope this, uh, hope this video helped you out a little bit. Uh, whether you're a beginner or more seasoned, um, it's always good to see different perspectives, see what, uh, see where people are coming from. And uh, I just hope this helped you all out a little bit.